gonna hack into your computers and I'm gonna steal all your personal information. I'm part of the Mafia. I'm just kidding, it's me, it's, it's Casey. That was just a joke. Because today, on Movie Review, we're gonna be reviewing one of the best cult movies from the 90s, or that's what people have said. There's been a lot of reviews for this movie, and everyone says it's a great movie. So I said to myself, if this is such a great movie, then I should review it because I'm going to be the next big movie reviewer. So will it be as good as the film we reviewed in last episode? I don't know. Maybe. It could be. I don't think so because that'd be really hard. But let us we're going to do it today. We're going to review the video. Today, we're going to be reviewing... Pulp Fiction. Mm -hmm. This is a tasty burger. Now I know what you're thinking. Casey, how can Pulp Fiction even top last video's film? You know, it's going to be hard to do, and we're going to have to really dig deep into this movie to figure out the aspects that make this a good film. Will it be better than The Cat in the Hat? I can't say that it will. I mean, this movie does have some comedy aspects, we'll give it that. Are there any cats in the movie? No. In fact, I don't think there's many hats in this movie either. And there are no animated fish. Yeah, this is going to be a rough episode. Pulp Fiction was made in 1994 by Quentin Tostito, not Bo Welch. Um, they aired it at the Cannes Film Festival, Cannes. Anyways, I think it won an award, not for best makeup and design, not for best cat, best picture. Uh, when the movie came out, it was very successful, people liked it. It's the number one film of the year. The movie stars, um, John Travolta, Samuel L. Jackson, I think Vin Diesel from Die Hard. So the story is about... Well, I really couldn't tell what the story was about because there were like three different storylines and none of them made any sense. The movie starts out and they're at a diner and there's, these, there's a guy and a woman and they're just like, we're gonna rob this place. So they do, I think, but then they cut off and then they go to another story. So then in the next story, we have Samuel L. Jackson and John Travolta and they're wearing suits. I don't know if they were late for a wedding or something and they need to pick something up on the way, but they talk about cheeseburgers in France. I think it was a big plot point. It, it does come back in the end. The Royale with cheese, which in French means cheeseburger. They go into an apartment and they see these two guys one of them has a Royale with cheese, and John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson get really mad, and they say, we were just talking about how we want a Royale with cheese, and you have one, so if you don't give it to us, we're going to shoot you. So the guy seems pretty resistant, and he says, I don't want to give you my Royale with cheese. And this makes Samuel L. Jackson very mad, and he put, takes out his gun, he sticks it right up to his face, and he says, if you don't give me that cheeseburger, then you're gonna die today. Meanwhile, the guy that's sitting on the couch in the corner is like, just give him the cheeseburger. It's not worth this. Do you wanna see this suitcase we have in the back? And then John Travolta's like, you have a suitcase in the back and you didn't tell us about it. And the kid's like, yeah. And John Travolta says, what's in it? What's in the suitcase? And the guy says, here, let me show you. So he gives him the suitcase, and it's very shiny, and you, you don't know what it is. They don't show you. There's no camera shot on what's in the suitcase. So we can only assume that it's a cheeseburger. And then there's the, the third act, and we have John Travolta again, but no Samuel L. Jackson. And that didn't make any sense, because all of a sudden, they go from them trying to get the cheeseburgers and then the next moment it's just John Travolta and he has to pick up this girl and they go out to eat and there's a big portion of the movie where it's just the dinner scene. It really adds nothing to the plot and Steve Buscemi comes in and he's the waiter and he says, you know, I was in a lot of Adam Sandler movies so you gotta 
put me in a cameo, because that's what you have to do it. They, they eat, they order a milkshake, and John Travolta's like, five dollars for a milkshake, that's a lot of money. I'm gonna take a sip of that. And the girl's like, okay, I'm paying for it, but I guess you can have a sip. So John Travolta takes a sip, and he says, this is a pretty good milkshake. Makes me want to dance. John Travolta and the girl get up and dance, and I guess there's a competition at the restaurant. I don't know how many restaurants that Quentin Tortilla has been to, but I've never seen a dance contest in a restaurant. They go home, the girl dies. So then we go to Act 3, and it stars Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel has a girlfriend, but he's also a boxer. He accidentally killed the guy in the boxing ring. He was scared that people would get mad at him, so he ran off. He goes to a pawn shop. Maybe he was trying to sell his boxing gloves, so he didn't have any evidence. The pawn shop owner was bad. He locked him in the basement, and I think he was just gonna beat him up, and they played a pretty cool song. So they go into the back room, and I, they beat up a guy, to the best of my knowledge. You don't see what they do, because the door closes, and you just hear, like, you hear him in, like, pain, so you can only assume that he's getting beat up. Vin Diesel unties himself, and he breaks out, and he goes to save the guy that was getting beat up. So they get out, and Vin Diesel and the other guy shake hands, and they say, Thanks for not killing me. So then we go to the fourth act, and we're back with John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson. Which, I don't understand why they had to do that. We already saw them earlier in the film, I don't understand why they finished that storyline first. So anyways, they're driving in a car, they have a, a guy in the back seat, and they're just talking. They're like talking about different things, talking about life, talking about fate, destiny, I think. Um, so John Travolta has a gun, because must be an Italian wedding he's going to, I don't know. He turns to the back where the guy in the back seat is and he says, so, I don't remember what he says, but he says something and then they hit a bump in the road or something and he shoots the guy, he killed him. So I really don't understand why there was a need for the inclusion of this character if they were just gonna kill him. So for the rest of the film, they try to clean up the mess in the car, they do it and then they go to a diner the same diner, actually, that was at the beginning of the film. It, the, the plot, the, the storyline was so confusing. We start off at the end of the film, and then at the end we go back to the beginning of the film, and then Vin Diesel had a storyline. Why was the girl there? Anyways, this movie was really too confusing for me, and I just don't get why there's so much hype. It really didn't connect, in my eyes. It was just not good. So, obviously this movie lacked in a lot. First off, we'll look at the cast. They were okay, I guess. John Travolta's been in a couple movies, so he's pretty recognizable. Vin Diesel's in The Pacifier. There was no Mike Myers, so that's a major loss right there. So we'll look at the costumes now, I guess. Wasn't anything special. They wore suits. I have a suit. It's not that hard to get a suit. What is hard is making a giant cat costume and making it look photorealistic. Now we're gonna take a look at the storyline and script writing aspect of the film. It was all over the place. I didn't understand why they went from one story to another and then tried to connect them back. It didn't really work. They should have just gone for a straightforward movie plot. Could have had two kids and a mischievous guy comes into the house. The whole time you think, wow, he's a nuisance to the family, but then in the end he brings the family together. He teaches the kids not to be so troublesome, and together they learn that they need to step up around the house. And in the end that mischievous guy that came into the house really saved the family. Could have had something like that, instead of all the violence. It was very gratuitous I might add. Let's look at comedy now. There wasn't a single toilet joke. So if I had to rate it, I'd give the comedy a 2 out of 5 gunshots. I'd give the storyline and script a 1 out of 5 gunshots. I'd give the costuming and design nothing. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to wear your pants. And whatever you do, don't watch Pulp Fiction. It's a waste of your time.